Kinky Friends. This is Margaret. And this is Colleen. And we're, we're the, the Cousins, Cousins Weird. Hi. Together at last. Together forever. We're tying a knot. They never can sever. Anything. Anything. Sorry, we listened to that record a lot when we were kids. Right down here in the basement where we're at right now. So So you have to endure it. Yes, because, you know. It's my terrible trend this week. Oh, Yay! great. It's what not any horrible nightmare should you be bestowing upon <laughs> me today? We're talking about vomiting today. Oh, good. Yay. Good. Emesis. Vomiting has been used to balance the horm- the the humors of the body oh, for centuries. Oh, the humors. We're going back to... Humors the, are not humors. To those bad humors. It was thought that a person who was ill... Was then it was the humors? Their humors were not in balance, and the humors were blood, black bile, yellow bile, or phlegm. Those are the four humors of the body. Okay, Those things were controlling the body, right? To get a humor back in balance, you would need to bleed, sweat, salivate, vomit, or poop it back to normal. So, like diarrhea was a way to get rid yes. of to balance your your humors. Great or vomiting, you know. I'm talking like today we're actually going. It, this is mostly about antimony, which is a metal, but we'll get to there in a minute. Um, emetics, which is something that causes emesis, which is what vomiting, like in the medical industry, emesis is vomiting, and emetics cause vomiting. No. Right. Um, they've been used since the Romans, think Julius Caesar, okay, to force someone to vomit. Emesis, emetics, make you puke. Um, although in Caesar's time, most nobles would force themselves to vomit simply so they could eat more food. They were at a party, they're and there's lots purging. of food. And then they got full, they would take things and go vomit, and come and back and eat more, just so they could eat more. Like, there's people starving, but let's, let's just vomit. gluttonous. Yes, and puke, and so we can just fit more food in there. And on a funnier note, because... Puking isn't funny. There it's is not funny. In Roman architecture, there's a place called a vomitorium. What? And that's like like the an exit of a building they refer to as a vomitorium because that's where the people would purge Vomit them. out. They would purge themselves of the building. So it's like right. that's where the building vomited you out. That's hysterical. Yeah. So like a vomitorium is actually a thing. A thing. Yeah. Where you're purged out of a building. Yes. But they, there's a lot of thought, like, that's where people would go to puke. No, that's where the building puked you out. Gotcha. <laughs> a vomitorium. So every time I leave, like... Like, uh, it was that common. They named a part of a building after yeah. people vomiting. And I was, I'm thinking every time I leave a sporting event, like, going to a hockey game and leaving, I'm being purged out. Of, I'm going to think of it that way. You're being purged from the building. Purged. Yes. So enter antimony on the uh, periodic chart of the elements. It's S. Big S, little B. Um, it's a shiny, brittle, silver white or grayish metalized, metal found in nature. Okay. Um, people have been used. They've known about antimony since at least six thousand BCE. So it's like people have known about it for a very long time. Um, in nature, it's found in its sulfide mineral stibnite, and that's probably where the S B comes from. Okay. But stibnite. Um. But it's like, that's where they get antimony from, is this metal stibnite. Because okay. it's usually found with other minerals like sulfur and things like that. So, like, it's it's not usually found by itself. It's with other things. Um, they have been used for medical and cosmetics. Sti- mm-hmm. uh, like, we'll have to edit this out because uh-huh. I, like, um... Antimony has been used for medicines and cosmetics for centuries. We're talking ancient Egyptians used it. Okay. They found it. The uh, Arabic name for antimony is coal, K-O-H-L, like eyeliner. Oh, eyeliner. Yes, and people used to put it on their oh, eyes. Oh, that's not good for you. It's a metal. You know, they didn't know. And that's like even in Egyptian tombs they found it in cosmetic trays oh, okay. with the coal eyeliner, which was mm-hmm. antimony. Um. Please note, it is very toxic. I'm pretty sure it would be. 
Um, the effects of antimony poisoning are very similar to arsenic poisoning. So, like, that's not good for you. Keep that in mind. Arsenic is what you kill people with, friends. I can't read that. <laughs> Pause. Okay, so for antimony poisoning, basically, because right. this is a poison, uh, small doses could cause headaches, dizziness, and depression. Ter- not not awfully terrible, but you know, I don't not want great. Any of it. No, larger doses can cause dermatitis. Contact because like people are putting it as makeup, right. you know. Kidney damage, liver damage, violent and frequent vomiting that can lead to death a few days later. Ew. You basically, you'll, this stuff will make you vomit yourself to death. Great. Yeah. Lovely. Just what you want to do. Oh, yeah. And kidney and, and liver damage. So, I mean, this is like... Bodily it's, organs it's, are shutting down. Yeah, it's a poison. That's what poisons do. An English physician named Dr. Robert James patented his, quotation marks, fever powder... In 1747, about which in this patent, he lied about the ingredients, claiming he didn't want anyone to copy or steal his miracle cure. So like when he put the patent for this medicine out, he didn't actually say what was in it. It's like fake. Like he lied about it. The ingredients of this powder were antimony and phosphate of lime. The powders were sold in individual doses wrapped in paper in a larger bottle, which was something new. Like, this was something that the doctor, like, he patented it, and this was, like, the era of patent medicine. Right. So, like, and a lot of doctors were like, well, that's not a real medicine. If you're getting a patent on it, it's fake. Right? Because, like, you know, most medicines are there for curing people, and you're not supposed to make money right. on them. Right, right, right. But, hence, he wanted to make money, so. Right. This is a legitimate physician. He went to school to become a doctor, right? And... He, they were, doses were pre-measured and wrapped in a little paper, and then all these little papers were put in a bottle, and the bottle was sealed. So this is something that people could take home, so if they had a fever or whatever, if they needed it, they'd have a dose already, they didn't have to contact the doctor every time. Right. So let's give these people some toxic substances that that's they can just, just eat at a whim. Yeah, let's right? just make people so smart. die. Right. At the time, fevers were considered a sign that the body had too much yellow bile. Because yellow bile produce, it's a hot thing. So if you're too hot, which means you have a fever, it means you got to get rid of your yellow bile. So to bring down a fever, you need to purge the excess yellow bile oh by vomiting. In Bedlam in, in England, which Bedlam is where they would put, it was an ins- yes, ins- asylum for asylum. In it's people. An they Yeah, an institution they would consider people insane. insane. They would put them there. They would treat the patients, they would, they would, Force the patient, patients to vomit is a preemptive um, to get rid of the fire madness that is why that they were crazy. Because they thought that they were crazy because they had too much bile. So they would just... Let's just vomit. Before they had a fever, they would just make them vomit every day. They'd force them. They'd give them medicine, probably this powder. Great. Great. Lovely. Slowly poisoning them to death. Um, James Fever Powder were advertised to cure... Like, according to the advertisements for this, it... Supposedly cured gout, scurvy, fevers, and distemper, which is something that affects animals and livestock. Yes. So if your dog has distemper, give him some of this powder. Oh, great. Yeah. Lovely. The powders were so popular that they were even mentioned in, like, print material. Like, there was a poem written by Christopher Smart, and it was published in 1756, and then it talks about this miracle powder in this poem. And another author... Uh, wrote a children's story called Goody Two Shoes. Oh, no. By, and this was written by Oliver Goldsmith. And in, in it, it's like the father, something happens with the father because he didn't have his James fever powder and he died oh. or something. On a side note, when Oliver Goldsmith found himself to be ill, and they think it was most likely a kidney infection that he had and he had a fever, he took large amounts of fever powder with his health declining rapidly, his friends told him he should stop taking the powders because he had, but because they, they looked at him and they're like, he looks like shit. Right. Because he's basically just vomiting all the time because he's trying to get rid of all of his extra bile. Um, this, this man actually went to college for, 
to become a physician. He, he went to school for it, but he didn't grad. He didn't become a physician, but he had that knowledge. Right. So in his brain, he's like, I know more than they know. I don't need to see a doctor. I can just treat I can just myself. Keep puking. Right. He thought he knew better, and he refused to stop taking the powders, and he died not long after. He was only 49, but he basically took these powders till he died. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. I feel like crap, and I'm puking every day, but let's just keep doing let's it. Let's keep doing it, because who doesn't like to puke? No thanks. I hate puking. I hate puking. His powders, James's powders, were actually used well into the 20th century. Wow. And they knew that antimony was toxic. But, but it's in such a small amount. It's the only thing you can do to puke. Like Ipecac, they could have used it in place of Ipecac. Like if. Oh, right. So like, and even they would, like the Romans, like I was said before, when they would uh, eat to puke, they would actually put antimony in their wine so that the wine, they could eat food and drink the That's wine. Awful. And it would make themselves vomit so they could eat more food. The Romans were wild. Why man. would you want to feel like that? I don't I, understand. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. But uh, James, Robert James, died at age 73, and he was a celebrated doctor. So even though his powders killed people, he was celebrated. He He wrote like a medical book, like a medical dictionary type thing book or a a reference book. Um, And he just was like a celebrated pioneer of the medical field. And even though he made this toxic poison that made people puke. I guess we have to find out that stuff to get to the better stuff, so he did do something. Well, he didn't take his powders himself because he lived a good long time, so. What a bastard. Yeah. Asshole. Well, that was great. Vomit his. Yeah, I thought a good, nice episode on vomiting. We haven't really done vomiting yet. No. I've done poop and pee. No, we had to get all the the, the eliminatory. All the humors humors Cover all those humors. We have talked about sweat with the gladiators. Yeah, sweat. Bodily fluids. Salivation. I don't think we've done a lot of spit yet, have we? Spit. Sperm. I'm sure we've, we've, yeah, I think we have talked about spit before, haven't we? I'm sure. We've talked about lots of awful things. Awful things on this. Why do people even listen? I don't know. Why, why do I or the way we listen, are? But you must be just as demented as yeah. we are. Why are we the way we are? This is what I want to know. <laughs> How come we're this way? We're not the only ones. We're not alone. We're not alone. All right, so that's my episode on antimony and why people like people took it to make themselves puke. I like it. Fantastic. Hey, Margaret. Hey, Kelly. Did you know that we're going to be at the Jefferson County Historical Society on I October twenty first? It's so exciting. Are we going to this episode? Both episodes are going up. They're going to be out awesome. before it. That's right, because it's not for. A week from Saturday. Yeah. So we're going to be there during the Haunted Happy Hour at 6 p.m. So make sure you yes, go there. Yes, you got to come and you got to, you can go and tell your own haunted stories or spooky yeah, stories. Yeah, people are going to share so theirs. We're going to share one. Yep, we're going to record the people who let us. Like, they're allowing us to record for the day. Yeah. And it's going to be our special Halloween episode. So if you'd like to come and share a story, you're going to be on our podcast. You'll be part of our podcast. How exciting. How exciting. I'm excited. If you want to see some pictures of puke. You should follow us on Instagram. <laughs> there are p- not pictures of puke. Pictures of the doctor and pictures of his medicine. You should follow us on Facebook and Instagram because we put pictures to the episodes on there. Yes. And we, any but I promise cool you, I have not shared any pictures of puke with Colleen. <laughs> I hope not. She so tells me that, but. There's puke pictures or ones that she put <laughs> on there. So make sure you're following us on those because you can share our episodes through your social media, through Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> if you'd like to reach out to us, you can send us an email at thecousinsweird at gmail.com. Or you can also send us a direct message through Facebook or Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. You can send a, shoot us out. Uh, hi, how you doing? We like your podcast. You can give us suggestions of things you'd like to see us cover. We'd love that. Um, we love so it. just, yeah, reach out to us. The best way to support our podcast is to share us on your social media, to tell your friends about us to write reviews on your favorite platform, to rate us on your favorite platform that you listen to us on. All those things push us out into the algorithm universe so we're right at the tippy top. And then other people can hear our craziness. Yeah. 
if you want to us. And <laughs> I said that. I, yeah, I had a huge brain fart. I'm like just trying to stay awake. I know. You've I'm been so really, tired. Like the last two weeks, we've been really busy, and like the weather just changed again, and it's rainy and overcast, which I actually love. Yeah, a good gray, cloudy day, but it's really affecting me. Like I'm really tired. It's like yeah. kind of making me want to just go home and curl up under a blanket and read a book. That's good. And I love that, but it's not conducive to actually achieving anything no. during the day. <laughs> So you can support us also through patreon.com backslash the cousins weird for a dollar a month to become a freaky friend and you get bonus content and a sticker. And then yeah. if you're really super fan, you become a terrible trender for five dollars a month and you get bonus content, a sticker, a yearly gift. Ad free episodes. Ad free episodes. Um and then a quarterly Skype, Facebook, some kind of live chat. Depending on who's there, who's going to be there. Um, And we're going to have really funny things to do as some bonus stuff on our Patreon. So make sure you're there because you'll cackle. You will. We'll cackle. We'll cackle. Even if you just want to listen and hear us cackle, it's worth it. I think that's a wrap. Happy spooky season. Happy spooky season. And uh, we'll see you next week. We're here yet. You'll hear us next week. Yep, you forgot the your ending line. I know. Stay freaky. <laughs> Bye. Bye.